Council meeting October 9th, 2019, 7 p.m. has been called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone to the Council meeting tonight. First of all, I want to declare that Halloween trick or treat will be Thursday, October 31st, 6 to 8 p.m. I have a couple other things that are not listed here that I want to uh, talk about briefly. Uh, this week, October 6th through 12th, is Public Power Week, and we have reason to celebrate. Like more than 2,000 utilities across the country, we are powered by a community owned, not for profit public power utility. During Public Power Week, we celebrate the benefits of living in a public power community, including low rates, high reliability, customer responsiveness, community focus, economic development, and local control. So this week is Public Power Week. So if you see the guys out working on the electric, you can say uh, thank you for all they do. They do work very hard with all the electric projects we have going on right now. These guys have been uh, putting in a lot of hours. And, uh, so hats off to those guys. Also, I'd like to proclaim uh, you know, October 23rd through 31st is Red Ribbon Week. And that is uh, that the city of Greendale does hereby proclaim October 23rd through 31st, 2019 is Red Ribbon Week. And it encourages its citizens to participate in drug prevention activities, making a visible statement that we are strongly committed to a drug-free city. I'd like to compliment the, uh, the members of CASA and the uh, youth group down there, the uh, Dearborn County Youth Ambassadors. They stopped by and dropped off uh, red ribbons. So if any of you on council or any of you in the audience would like to have a red ribbon before you leave tonight. I'd be glad to give you one of these that you could proudly wear during that week. So thank you for that. And I'm sure they the uh, those the youth of CASA thank you also. Let's move on to the approval of, sep of the minutes. September 11, 2019 public hearing. I need a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. We'll call a vote, Matt. Aye. Jerry. Aye. Ty. Aye. Doc. Aye. Scott. Aye. Kurt. Abstain. The minutes have been approved. The September 11, 2019 public hearing. Next, we need the approval of the September 11, 2019 council meeting. Council minutes. I'll make that motion. Second it. We'll call vote. Jerry. Mr. Mayor. Aye. Uh, I didn't do too well in grade school spelling, but I don't believe you spell hero with H E R E O. H. What page is that? Two. I I'll, I'll let you type it next time, Doc. <laughs> Make that correction. <laughs> we had a few uh, made the motion to approve. I did. Jerry. And My second. My second. second. Matt second. Roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Kurt. Abstain. Doc. Aye. Matt. Aye. Jerry. Aye. 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 The September 24, 2019 Executive Session Minutes. Do you need signatures on that? So make sure you sign those. We just need signatures on that. And the approval of the September 24, 2019 special council minutes, those aren't ready yet, and those will be uh, approved 
We're brought to for your approval at the next meeting. Any questions on any of the points? Audience comments? If there are none, we'll move to the clerk treasurer's report. Joey? Uh, the 2019 financial report. <coughs> Make a motion we pass ordinance 2019 20. I'll second. Roll call vote. Doc? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Scott? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Matt? Aye. Ty? Aye. Ordinance 2019 20 has been approved. Second. Second. And Jerry second it. Okay. Do you second that, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. Doc, you got to be a little quicker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll study my spelling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll call vote. Kirk. Aye. Doc. Aye. Scott. Aye. Jerry. Aye. Ty. Aye. Matt. Aye. Ordinance 2019 21's been approved. Make a motion. We approve ordinance 2019-24. Second that. Any discussion? Just Hi. Hi. We'll go roll call vote. Ty. Aye. Doc. Aye. Matt. Aye. Jerry. Aye. Scott. Nay. Kurt. Is this ordinance 24 or 22? 24. 24. I apologize. 22 and 23 would have been ordinances for salaries you approved at the last meeting. Okay. Uh, aye. Gotcha. I'm just making sure. Scott, you were in the A? Yes. Okay. So ordinance 2019 24 has been approved. Sign tonight before we get me. Gosh, I missed that. 
Joey, if I miss a signature, you know where to find me. Um, I'll be here tomorrow and catch up with you. <laughs> Executive Redevelopment Executive Director Report. I was not here tonight, but Jerry, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, everybody said the report's kind of on there. Uh, the only thing, is everybody's seen where the lights have uh, been turned on over by the roses there. I think the uh, timer's still kind of in question over there, but they're working on that. Yeah, it's just on a timer. It's not on the loops yet. Um, hopefully, uh, they're supposed to be paving and milling next week. And once they get that done, it'll go to two lanes eastbound, two lanes westbound, which I think is going to greatly fix the problem. And I think Councilman Bow brought up a good point. There's a lot of traffic diverting off of Kilby onto 50 to get away from the bridge as they're coming back in. I think a lot of people coming westbound on 50. Um, but once you get the loops in, the loops will be detecting cars on 50. And if there's no one coming out of Flossy, then uh, the lights will stay green on 50. So we're just going to have to, I hate to say it, but bear through it here the next week and a half or so um, until the milling and paving's done. And But all in all, I reported at the Board of Works. I think Chief can um, confirm that we had a lot of real positive comments over near the Wings uh, location, Cinema, St. E's. The roses. Um, a lot of people using it over the weekend were really happy with the signal there, so it's worked out good. And the entryway to the old entry exit is right in, right out now. That's right. They got the doors pretty much done, um, but the barrels are all still there, so you can only go right in, right out, right there. That was part of the plan. So, so I, I tell you, I, I think once it's all done, and I was over there last weekend and this weekend, uh, I think most of the people are going to. Even on the right out, I think they're going to go down to the light. Yeah. You know, I, I think, think you guys are going to be down there last. Yeah. Hopefully so. Anything else? And then the other things, the K9 Country Club are still planning on opening maybe in October. They've had some problems with uh, fencing contractors, so hopefully and they'll give us a couple weeks' notice for, uh, for the opening. One other thing I'd like to throw out to the council, too, is and then we give a brief update on redevelopment every month. I wonder if we could do the same thing on the rest of the board, just a brief description of what's going on with the board, park planning, maybe even uh, board works, if we could do something like that, or yeah. what everybody thinks about that. Because you, everybody doesn't have a chance to go to every meeting for every board, so I think it would be kind of nice to have a, a, just a brief update of what's going on on different boards. Sure. Yeah. That's a good idea. If I get that teed up. Good idea, Jerry. But one more thing before we move on there. The uh, the Argosy surface lot, is everything good with the trailer parking that's going on down there now? Yeah. Um, Argosy, uh, Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jay, I think you were talking to them. Everything is kind of teed up. I did. I, I talked to the uh, director of Hollywood, Ken Schwab, um, and uh, he kind of jumped the gun on him a little bit and didn't get a permit right out of the gate, but I've uh, talked to him since. He's applying for a permit, and uh, we got everything squared away. Cool. Those are uh, empty. Yeah, I figured out. Yeah, it's also Amazon trucks and stuff down there, and as soon as they put all the fencing up. So. I think once the Amazon facility and by the airport's finished, their storage of trailers won't be an issue. Right now, I think they're storing them up by eight. Uh, Forest Fair Mall, too. Fast Pro. Fast Pro Fair, yeah. They're just trying to figure out a place to store it while they're doing all that construction. So you don't think that'll be a long term? I don't believe Did he say that? Uh, he told me it was temporary. I, I don't know if that means that I'll narrow it down a little bit better when he, uh, when he returns his permit to me. I'll will will I permit stay as temporary or is it a permit a temporary permit? Well, he hasn't submitted all. He hasn't submitted it yet to me, so the fence is temporary. Things he needs okay. to do before to get him get him right over there. It's it's a good time while we got some attention on that area because I I think we need to spend some attention on 
getting that thing dressed up. I mean, it's still. Well, and I think well, it's, it's the just, sign's still there too. That's yeah, been there we for still have the sign structure. This thing needs that thing needs to come down. That needs to come down. I know we talked about we talked about that for a while, but come on, yeah. I, I've got a blowtorch to back the truck. I'll volunteer. I've seen your repair golf club. <laughs> Else? All right, uh, Mayor's report. Before we go to the 2020 fireworks contract, uh, I do want to mention a couple of things. A few weeks ago, I uh, went to Indianapolis. I told everyone last month I have uh, some news for you, all some good news. Uh, myself, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, John Commons, and uh, uh, Sandy Whitehead from Dillon County Solid Waste District. We went up to Indianapolis and uh, Greendale was, uh, got the award, the Governor's uh, Environmental Excellence Award in Recycling and Reuse. So this is the uh, award we got. So, so nice. So there were 21, 21 cities in the running. And so we are lucky to be number one in that. So that was one of the awards. Last weekend uh, in St. Charles, Illinois, uh, Linda and myself attended the AIB National Symposium. Uh, Greendale was awarded a, a uh, was given an award for our flower arrangements throughout the city, which is a big deal, but uh, they broke those awards down by population of cities. So for, uh, I think, 5,000 cities from 3,500 to 5,000, we got the award for that. And then uh, also the big award out of all the cities that are involved in uh, AIB, uh, the largest city is Lexington, Kentucky. We were the one who got the award for urban forestry. So that's a big deal. So uh, that included everybody, every city that's involved in American Bloom. Linda's not here tonight. I was hoping she would be. She can talk a little bit about that, but uh, that's a big deal for Greendale. I think that's the first time we've gotten that award uh, for urban forestry. And she and plays that, an awful big part in that. She I got, got, she's done a wonderful job. she's out job. planting trees, Mayor. <laughs> Linda puts a lot of work uh, into doing plantings. And she's not here, but, uh, and she doesn't like recognition, but I think the city, of, she's a very positive uh, person for the city, does a lot of good things, and uh, I know for a fact that she takes a lot of her own resources to buy the flowers and spends a lot of her own time to plant them, so that's all, all good. So we appreciate that. All right. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I can give you some good news on something else that we're going to be awarded. I've been invited to a an event in Madison that uh, I know is going to be some more good news. So, I wish I could tell you all tonight, but I can't. Yeah, don't, don't do it all one night. Gotta leave spread you in it suspense. out a little bit. <laughs> See, if I leave you in suspense, you'll all come back next month. Just to find out. All right, uh, the 2020 firework contract. Uh, the company that uh, did the fireworks last year <coughs> has submitted their contract for this year. It's the same cost as last year, I believe. Uh, why we're doing this so early, we usually do this at the first year of around February. Uh, this gentleman who runs this company contacted me and said next year, 4th of July is on Saturday. And he's already getting a lot of calls from uh, cities uh, asking about their company doing fireworks on the 4th for them. Uh, he's getting calls from cities, little c cities and towns who have, haven't done fireworks in the past, but because it's on a weekend, they, they're getting calls. So he's saying if you want his services next year, that he would like to know as soon as possible. So uh, I'm bringing that before you. And I think the, the cost is the same as last year, 14000 is his cost. And uh, so I'll bring that before you guys at this time. I don't know if they, I didn't have that in my packet. I don't have anything. Oh, okay. I've got the contract. It's the same as one last year. The price is 14000 
uh, right, the same same, company same as last rainy year. same rainy day policies same still everything. still exist. And it's uh, right. We can't pay in advance. It's been policy, well, standard procedure in the past where we paid half of it, but we can't do that anymore, and he knows that. So, uh, if you want, I can run in and get the. Is that usually a bid project? It ha since I've been mayor, it has been one year. The other years, they just kept re-upping with the. Last year was the first year that another company okay. submitted. Anyone calls them, I usually just I think they use the same company for. We did. And I, I think this one we went through is it was new. Yeah. yeah. Started last year. year. Yeah. Right. But the one prior to that was just the one that every year they just re up right. that one. Right. Year after year after year. After year. So, that's up to you, folks. Uh, you know, I'm just bringing it to your attention. I, I just say, you know, we don't want to wait around and call him up a month or two from now and him say, well, we it's don't too have late. It, yeah. That's up to you. This is your call. I'm just bringing it to your attention. It's the same company as last year. Everything's the same as it was last year. Price is fourteen thousand. If you want to just go ahead and renew with him, that's fine. If you don't, we can whatever which way you guys want to do. Don't want to miss out. Yeah. Prices he didn't raise his price. Yep. Didn't, he was a few hundred dollars higher last year, I think, than the people we've been using. No, he, no, was, he was he was lower. Exactly he was lower. Same. He was lower. Lower. He was a thousand dollars lower. Than lower. The year, the year before. Well, I'm making a motion. We. <clears throat> Accept the contract for the 2020 fireworks. I'll second that. Roll call vote. Doc? Aye. Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Scott? Nay. Ty? Aye. All right. Valley Woods entrance. Bid openings. Uh, the entrance of Valley Woods, we've uh, sent out bid. Brazo Engineering took care of that, sent out a notice uh, for bids uh, to improve the, take care of the entrance of uh, Valley Woods, and we got the bid opening tonight, so if you want to go ahead and have three bids. <coughs> Two bids, the first one's from Garing, Garing Group. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Bob, you're going to help me with the bid tabs. The bid bond is in place. Uh, Form 96. Is in place. Financial statement is here also. And the engineer's bid form is here. And their price is thirty-three thousand sixty dollars and seventy-five cents. Three three zero six zero and seventy-five cents. Gearing group. I'm sorry. Okay, the next bid is from Casey Outdoor Solutions. Seal bid. Let's see, 496 is in place. The bid bond is in place. They have the uh, financial statements. And his bid is ten thousand six hundred and forty one dollars and sixty one cents. One zero six four one and sixty one cents. Got one more. What was the cents on that? Sixty one. Sixty one. <clears throat> Last bid is for TP Environmental Services. Sealed bid. is in place. The bid is for ten thousand three hundred and forty dollars even. Ten zero three four zero even. That's all the bids we have. All right. Well, that that is under our. I think we had a lot of twelve thousand yep. dollars. So after the first bid, I was a little worried, but <laughs> since we're since we came in under, that's that's great. I, I'd like to make a motion that we use Tepe uh, Environmental Solutions for $10,000. Casey Outdoor, $10,160. Yep. 
Well, was Casey's lower? I thought Casey's was, Casey's was 10 6. 10 6. Uh, see, I knew I had that messed up. Well, let's stipulate, let the president oh. engineering look over. I thought you said one that to make sure that you. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I'll change what, my motion. What then. was Casey's? 10641 and 61. $10,641.61. Okay. Okay. I have a quick question for the. the the um, the specs on the bids were for the exact same. Yes. We already had it mapped out, right? This kind of plant, this kind of very, tree. Very clear. Right. So I'll I'll change my motion then. Uh, I, I we're still going to use uh, the lowest bid, which would be Tepe, but uh, as long as Mr. Rezzo has a chance to look at it, and make sure everything is is to his specs. Right. Sure. Can you make that motion? Yep. I need a second. I'll second. Any discussion? All right. Roll call vote. Ty. Aye. Scott. Aye. Jerry. Aye. Matt. Aye. Doc. Aye. And Kurt. Aye. So you'll take this. Mr. Rezzo, you'll take those. Uh, we're going to be on tomorrow and get back this week tomorrow. Okay. All right. All right. That's all I've got. So we'll move on to unfinished business. Parkside, uh, the project's about 95% complete. There's just a little bit of curb striping and um, hot rubber that needs to be put in between the curb and the asphalt. Uh, they were over there watering today, and that kind of precludes them from doing the painting on the, the curb when they're watering. So um, I think it's my understanding that they're supposed to be there tomorrow to finish up the striping work. And then hopefully here we can get row off the US-50 and get up here and finish up the job. But um, it, it, it came out relatively well. <coughs> it definitely was a struggle uh, with respect to all the real wet weather we had early on. and then all the real dry weather laying sod in 95 degree weather that just didn't work out real well but there is some dead sod that needs to be replaced and I'm part of the punch list I'll make sure Ro replaces it so that's it with that project the DNR trails grant I'm not really up to speed it's uh, in the engineering phase okay I know MS is working on that um, there's no updates they're just working on the engineering with it right now should we take it off yeah, it'd probably be a good idea to just take that off until they get that done. Because that's going to be the same every month until they get past the engineering part. That's all I have. Okay, code enforcement report. Good evening, Council. Good evening, David. Good evening. Yep. Uh, three quarters of the way back, you should have your code enforcement report there. Jay, was there any movement on that garage on Oberdeen? Yeah, I talked to uh, I talked to that guy. I have well, I shouldn't say yeah, but he did tell me he was going to do some stuff, and uh, I 
and I've heard from him. So that's either he's either get he's either not going to listen to me or we're going to have to do go unsafe on it yeah, because uh, when he goes dark on me. Right. He's not from the area, so I can't go beat on the door all the time. Right, exactly, yeah, I understand so, that. I got yeah, the phone number for him, and he's just making me empty promises. So all if right. you get anything done, we're probably going to have to go unsafe on that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing that sometime in the future. I mean, this, is, this has been an ongoing thing yeah. for, for, for yeah. well over a decade. So. Right. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Hey, Jay, one more real quick. I noticed down on 50 today, too. The lot in between, I believe it's McDonald's and the old Cole House Medical Office building. Yes. It's getting to be like what the Cloverleaf looks like at times. Right. We, uh, we used to have a mowed every year, and I uh, used to be on them all the time. Uh, we sent him a letter, and uh, he sent back something from his attorneys stating that that is agricultural because it's connected to that cornfield. And so we haven't done anything to him. The owner of McDonald's, he cuts that occasionally himself. So if you see it cut, it's we'll know who did it. McDonald's. Yeah, it's it's getting it. pretty. It's probably about four foot tall now. Uh, it, uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. I know that uh, the last time we tried to revisit that, like I said, we got that letter. Since it's attached to that cornfield right there, uh, it is it is that same parcel as the cornfield right behind. Gotcha. The house is building Buff, or the Mavericks and all mm -hmm. that. It, it's all one parcel. And so... Kind of, All right. But that's something we can bring back up. I mean, if you want to revisit that? Yeah, we'll look into it. I'll get with Anthony, I, I guess. I, I don't think our zoning code, when it, and high weeds and grass doesn't necessarily distinguish between, you know, the field down there. We, can, can someone complain about corn, you know, growing over there? I, I don't know. I mean, there are weeds, and I know yeah. the guy from the guy from McDonald's complains about vermin and animals and rats and stuff coming over there. So yeah, I guess we should look into it. Okay. Did you did a not to be stubborn? And it's, it's a question. But Jay kind of left it that that we had decided that that was okay over there. That's a property I was talking about, and uh, which subdivision? Can't Remember Armitage. Armitage. Back in Armitage, so we have a big concrete sub basement pour with a three foot fence around it. In the summer, water fills up in there, but not this summer because it was a drought. But otherwise, water sits in there year round, and mosquitoes get in there. And I don't see how that's I don't see how that's not unsafe. Further, when you you ask for a building permit to build a building, not just to pour a concrete foundation. At some point, you can't just let that sit for over 10 years. I don't think. I mean, so for clarity, I'm wondering if I'm alone on feeling this way, or <laughs> well, I mean, we don't have any teeth in that. Mosquitoes are a big enough problem. That's, that should probably be addressed, that's for sure. Well, first we have to see if it violates any ordinances, and if it does, and we take action. If it doesn't violate any ordinances, and they put a fence around it for the safety area, then it, you know it's on private property. So you know we got to reach out. If it doesn't violate any of our codes, then we have to reach out to Anthony to see if there's any uh, anything we can do other than that. If it violates a code, then it's a different. Uh, but I think last time we addressed it, I think Steve, you looked in it and it wasn't violated. From a violation of an unsafe building, I, I think would be a stretch. Um, Potentially with that now, if it's mosquitoes or things of that nature, then we can address that. I mean, we could um, uh, get the county involved, the health department, things like that. But um, I, I don't. I, I guess technically, if someone wanted to go on a piece of private property and, and build a foundation, a hole in the ground, I guess they technically could do that and and not finish out. I, I don't mean to be flip about it, but um, I don't know if it, it would. It would meet or rise to the standards of an unsafe building condition. I mean, if you read the ordinances or the state statute on unsafe building, it talks about you know things that are a threat to um, the residents' buildings collapsing, falling down, um, things of that nature. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I feel like that in the past it seems like, and certainly I'm not an attorney, and I don't play one on TV either. Um, 
it seems like in the past we've used unsafe building to deal with blighted buildings and buildings that weren't unattractive and buildings that were hurt in property value. And I mean, that, that it's a pretty big hole. It's pretty deep. The fence is really ugly and it's only about three feet high. Um, I don't, it certainly seems more unsafe to me than some of the other situations that we've dealt with that were really, we just didn't like them because they were unattractive. Is there an open building permit on it? I mean, isn't there a completion percentage? You know, when you get a building permit, can you just build your building halfway and put a fence around it and let it sit? Can somebody put a house halfway down the park side and just not finish it, put a fence around it and let it sit there for years? No, I don't I don't think there's, I don't think the building permit would be valid. I mean, it, like I think um, Councilman was saying that it's probably 10 or 15 years ago is when they, they built the building. Uh, was it oh, they the building. I'm sorry? They never built no, it was, it was they, they put the foundation in and stopped at that point. Um, but they had a permit for a building, right? They, they did. And it, it never got completed and it's, it's halfway completed. I'm, I'm just giving the corollary. You start a house on Park Avenue, Park Side, and you get so far. And you well, I, I think the money, solution. Put a, put a fence around it, leave it sit. Yeah, I think the solution is that we should um, schedule an unsafe building hearing of council um, and then let council vote on if it's unsafe uh, at a hearing next month, at our next meeting. I think that's the best way to address it since it's been brought up several times. We could have the owners here, um, yeah. and then they. I mean, just, are, are there any other avenues other than unsafe? I mean, if, if our attorney says it's not, it doesn't fit under unsafe, I'm happy with that. You're the attorney. No, we can't I mean, get no, into a lawsuit. I haven't can't win. heard anybody else bring this up. But like Brad said, you ask for a building permit. You can't ask for a building permit to build a house and then to build uh, something totally different. And then so somebody asks to build or whatever, and then. We, we didn't get that, so at some point, what they did couldn't have been. I have a meeting with the head of the HOA of that uh, condo related to a different subject than that, and I'll ask that person about this and, and what their feelings are, and if they feel it's a problem with them, then uh, I'll invite them to, to me, but you all want to have a special meeting to determine if it's unsafe next month? Well, yeah. why, why don't we wait until after you have a meeting with them and ask them what their plans are for the well, for that particular site. It's not the I owner of the site, it's the HOA, it's the right. Right, it's a, right. we'll see what, see, what their, see what their plans are for it. They don't really ever plan on building anything, possibly just filling it in may be the yeah, best well, answer for everybody. But uh, I do have a meeting with uh, that person next week. And I can ask him about this. We can do the carrot first and talk to them and see what, just what the council was talking about. We can see what they want to do and, and see what, uh, what what's on their plans. Yeah, the yeah. Let's, let's at least maybe give them an opportunity to, to do something before we do it unsafe. And then if that doesn't work, then we can always go that around. I think that would be our best avenue as far as and that let, goes. You know, I'll uh, let you all know what, you know, what that person, because she's head of the HOA and she wants to meet with me with, uh, just wants to meet with me to talk about different things. That's what she said. So maybe that's one of the things she wants to talk about. So we'll, uh, you know, is the fence adequate, you know. Steve? It's, you were over there, Jay. Is it like a four foot fence? It's uh, yeah, chain. Just or, it's not even chain. It's uh, just like a T post. Hard yeah. wire fence. Wire fence. Yeah, hard wire fence. Um, so yeah, the result gaps in it or nothing like that. It's tied together. It's yeah, as far as I remember. I mean, I haven't been over there for a minute. But I'll go over first thing in the morning, get some more pictures, and see what state it's in at this right now. Thanks, Jay. All right. <laughs> and I'll, I'll invite that lady. And any of the others, if they have a concern, to come to the next, to that to the next council meeting to voice their concern to that. Day. We haven't had anybody voice that concern to us yet. Other than council member. Well, s some people reached out to me a year and a half ago from there. That's how it came up. I just didn't. I just didn't invent it. I've never even been back there. So, all right. City attorney report. There I have in front of you resolution.
Resolution 2019-7, Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Greendale, Indiana, approving certain amendments to the plan for the Interstate 275 Economic Development Area. This is often referred to as a RETIF. This was approved by the Redevelopment Commission, of which Jerry and Doc are your uh, members. And it was also approved by the Planning Commission, of which Matt and Scott are your members. And this is amending and adding a portion of the city to the economic development area. There's color maps included. I'm looking for a motion to approve that. And this was approved by the Planning Commission? Yes. So, since, um, since Jerry expressed an interest to know what's going on at the uh, Planning Commission, so just a really quick summary of um, this, this was, retip was brought to us um, at our regular meeting a month ago and we hadn't seen it until that night and that um, Linda uh, objected to that um, I objected to that so we sat on it there seemed to be some urgency as to um, how fast this needed to be done and um, Linda questioned the addition of some parcels that were added to the TIF. Um, she wasn't happy with the addition of a few parcels and wanted some explanations why. And throughout that process, the, the reasons given um, changed, kind of changed a couple times, so she was pretty unhappy with that. So ultimately, she voted um, no on those basis. So. so she voted no, but she did have time physically got up the same day. Uh, um, well, we called a special meeting. Uh, it, we called a special meeting, I think Monday. Was the meeting Monday? Monday, no. Yeah. We, we tabled it originally, Jerry, when it first yeah, came. So yeah, we tabled it so that we it. could look at it. And she wasn't happy that some uh, additional parcels had been added that aren't retip but are brand new parcels. And, you know, her, her question was what was the reasoning for those parcels being in there? And the answers changed a few times, and she wasn't super thrilled about that. The reason they read tip, I mean, there's some parcels that only got 10, 10 years left on them. And it's just as easy to do everything. It, the cost is less. It costs you more to do one little piece than it does the whole, almost the whole thing. That's why they're re-tipping all of it right now. And I don't know why she objects to the little, to the ones down here on the uh, I think the fairness to Linda, she's not here to. Well, I can, for some, some of the concerns that came up was talk to voice her concerns. So let's just, you know, if, if anyone on council here has a concern, bring it forward. So, some of the concerns that came up planning were that's an area that we've always considered was going to be green space going forward. If you look at the area there, I think it would be very, very hard for somebody to come in and build something there. It's all hillside. It's all sloping back. It would be very hard to do it. There was some concern around, sure, Nothing's going to happen, you know, maybe in the next 10 years, but what happens in f the next 15 years if it's a 25-year TIF? Um, I, I'm a, I was of the opinion that I, I don't think anything could go in there and be built just because of how it is. Wouldn't it have to come back to playing the commission it anyway absolutely would. To, be, to be voted on to do that? Yeah. Yes. Well, I, think, I believe we have something in, in, in Oregon somewhere that, Steve, and that, that you can't build on a certain slope or... So on and so forth. There's a there's slope setback setback issues. You have setbacks there's all kinds of stuff. Big concern because so, so the ordinances and, and laws we have in place would disallow anything that would probably take away that green space that you guys are. We talked a little of. bit during the planning commission for someone to meet the 25 foot setback. You're going to be out in thin air, so there'd be a huge construction, not unlike what you'd see in Mount Adams potentially. You know, big foundations and stuff. So it, it could be. It potentially could be done, but it'd be very, very costly. I know another thing came up is original in the first comp plan, that was all green space. And then in the second comp plan, we did find where that little mixed use area did go into that area, and that was some, some fun of discussion. But um, yeah, I, I think the majority of everyone thought that trying to build on that site would just be cost prohibitive, to say the least. And, and to your point, Ty, anything that would have to go there, it would have to come back through planning, through redevelopment. And then if it was something that made sense, it's something we have 
we'd have to consider, but I would be very surprised for something to come right. through yeah. that would. Great, thanks. That, that clarifies that for me then. Thank you. First, we'd have to set our change of ordinance on our setbacks. And a lot of that fill in the back there is probably not, so, uh, you're not going to build anything back there. How many? How much fill is back of that half moon to make that parking lot? There's quite a bit of fill that just got dumped in there. But <clears throat> the area that the vast majority of the area they're talking about was, I think, across from Brown Street down to Kansas, where you don't take three steps off the sidewalk and you're going over the hill. It's, it's very steep slope, very unstable too. That location. I think it's why a lot of the buildings are gone. Is a lot of the foundation problems that they were having. There's a late, there's a uh, family that lives in a house on Ridge Avenue down there. She says if she took, she told me she goes if I take a bowling ball and drop it on my front door, I can watch it roll. All the way. If I open up my back door, it'll just roll right on out. She says the house slopes, so issues back here. So with that said, I need a motion. I make a motion to approve Resolution 2019-7. I need a second. Can you wait on the vote? Okay. <coughs> I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Ready, Joey? Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call vote. Doc? Aye. Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Ty? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Scott? Nay. Resolution 2019-7 is passed. Do you have anything else, Anthony? Oh, uh, no, that's all I have for the evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else I have? If not, I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Kurt made the motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. Kurt, all in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. <laughs>